to the still at home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and I'm about to bring you everything you need to know about the Rocket League world. We, as always, have a great show for you guys today. And it's in, just realized it's in front of a green screen, and I hope the editors don't do anything weird to me. But we I have Grid Watch, which is finishing up season X with South American Oceanic Championships. Drip A is featured in Double Tap, and of course, we got everything you need to see from the Rocket League community in the breakout. Some awesome news just for Rocket League Esports. The main Rocket League channel was the second most viewed Twitch channel during the RLCS Season X Championship week. Rocket League is only getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And for all of us that were in it at the beginning, we have to say, I told you so. And I don't think it's anywhere near the top it's going to be. But moving on, EU and NA weren't the only regions that finished up this month. Gridwatch has you covered with South American and Oceanic Championships. The Season X Championships are over and done. But before we move on to Mid-Season Madness, let's take a look at how Oceania and South America capped off their respective finals. Both regions saw intense rivalries dominate Season X, and in both cases, those rivalries came to an explosive end in these exciting championship series. While North America and Europe had more teams, therefore a bigger bracket, Oceania and South America only had two. So it was a best of seven, best of three, for all the glory. Brazil is without a doubt the powerhouse of the South American Rocket League scene. A Brazilian team has won the regional finals every single season without fail ever since South America became an officially recognized RLCS region. That's why it came as such a surprise when True Neutral rose to prominence in Season X, comprised of two Argentine players and a Chilean player. True Neutral sought to finally challenge Brazil's South American throne. TN were the favorites to win going into the championship, but of course they first had to overcome their season-long rivals, Furia, a trio of bombastic Brazilians hoping to keep the streak going. The first series was definitively in True Neutral's favor, while Furia scooped up the first two games. Tien's decisive scoreline and courageous carballing won them the next four games straight. Tander, well, couldn't find an angle and certainly didn't have a teammate to fish to, but Card forces the ball across. Furia really needs something here in the final seconds. Up high is Kayo, but he's beaten by a mile on Ray's Bowl. AJG pushes it forward. Some insurance late. He can't find it. Tander flips back around. Final seconds. Card. Last chance. 72 in the tank. Has two options. Which one does he take? He goes underneath. It's blocked off the post oh. and saved by True Neutral. They take the first series. This is when Furia's full ferocity awakened, however, as they positively crushed the second series with their foes only managing to squeak out a single win. A humiliating 6-0 game and deft overtime win in the final round proved that Furia were here to play and would push True Neutral to their breaking point in the struggle to remain on top. Yet, this is still way, way alive. Three minutes into the overtime and here comes Sander. Play in the air, the pass for Kayo, no, he keeps playing alone. Look at the center of that ball, Chad has to clear it up. Now comes Thunder, play against the corner, Kayo, what a block by Rice, but here comes another shot! And Card, Card, Card the King, Card, sets this series for Furia. The third and final series started out in true seesaw fashion. TN took games one and two, but then Furia answered back with two of their own, making it seem like they had seized momentum in an inverse of the initial series. True Neutral have shown that they're more than capable of pulling off grand reversals while under pressure though, and that's just what they did here, closing things out with two final victories to secure themselves the championship, and ending Brazil's four season long reign. It is all, all started with Chad. That that Chad over there, just uh, avoiding that that clear, just t keeping the ball right in front of the net. That race was just with the hit that he missed and ADG completing the shot. But it was Chad, and I, I have to say, you know, it seems to me that Chad has been that MVP, that guy that will still uh, do everything right, not, not just one thing, but everything on defense and offense, and, and just open up so many opportunities uh, for his teammates. It, it's incredible the, the way that Chad played throughout the whole day. Oceania's rival, on the other hand, was much more personal. The championship match was Ground Zero Gaming versus the unsponsored Cringe Society. But anyone who's kept an eye on the region knows that it was a, really a battle between GZ's Torsos and CS's Drippe. The two had been teammates for the majority of their competitive career, founding Cringe Society together way back in 2016. Their age-old partnership would terminate midway through the fall split, however, as Torsos left Cringe Society for Ground Zero, picking up numerous regional wins in the process. Thus, this last major was a very big deal 
to both teams and both players. Ground Zero had been the heir apparent to Oceania for the majority of Season X, which is why it shattered expectations when Cringe Society ran away with the first series 4-2, securing an early advantage in a competition most expected GZ to have in the bag. And what a start to the day that we're having. We were a little bit worried that it might be a bit boring here, CJ. 100%. You know, I was, I was thinking of going back to bed after a little bit 4-0, 4-0 <laughs> sort, of, sort of number here. But to Creed Society's credit, they're going to be keeping me up for a while longer. This could be a little goal for Memphis just to show off a little bit. No, that, that pretty much sums up the series because Yummy, I'd say that he hits that nine times out of ten any other game. Yeah, he's very, very accurate with his doubles off the backboard, but it doesn't matter. Cringe Society. Unfortunately, this momentum would not persist. Ground Zero put the pedal to the metal in the second series, only allowing enough leeway for Cringe Society to squeak out a solitary win. Their commanding 7-2 victory in the opening game was practically a declaration of war, and Cringe Society only had one last chance to turn things around. They're not going to be in defense. They're not going to be pressured at their zero second mark, and that's a great 50 by Express that will allow them to even score a goal and there we go ground zero take series number two huge game coming out there from ground zero it's just a little bit of an unfortunate ending there Amphis just just putting the nail in the coffin nailing the nail on the nail on the head yummy as we like to say mm -hmm. there just putting that one away and ground zero but the miracle never happened in fact ground zero went even harder in the final series securing a clean sweep without even giving away a single round if nothing else gc's utter dominance in the latter stage of the championship was an excellent showcase of both their excellent teamwork yet also individual strength qualities necessary for asserting ground zero as the best team in the region chance as well you can see both teams very nervous in these final seconds Really slowing that one down. There's only 16 seconds left. Any slowdown is advantage here for Ground Zero as 10 seconds rings. Amphis gonna keep it away from one. Just solo rocking down the clock. Another shot on, on target as Drippe, the last hope here for Cringe Society. Is he gonna be able to get it all the way to the other end? He can't! Ground Zero do it! They take the last game and they take the championship. And that's it. Season X was an incredible showing from all regions, but everyone's still waiting with bated breath for international competition to resume so we can see who truly stands at the apex of the Rocket League world. Here's to Season X and all the seasons yet to come. I think with North America and Europe dominating uh, a lot of the, the mainstream Rocket League broadcast, it is sometimes easy to forget about the South American and Oceanic regions. You know, we, we, we have some of the best plays from South America and some of the best own goals from Oceania, but both regions are always fun to watch. So uh, I, I hope to continue seeing uh, a lot from those regions. South America are in a lucky position, the fact that they get to, to practice sort of with a little ping ag against a lot of those North American teams, or at least North American players in ranked. So that that's nice for them. Oceania has it a lot harder. So the fact that they semi keep up is, is very impressive from the region. But uh, like I said, Last week, this season was a grind, but it was a very, very important grind for Rocket League Esports in general, I think. Season X was the turning point. It was that pivotal moment in our esport that shows, hey, we got some great ideas and it's only uphill from here. So I'm excited to see what the future holds. With that being said, let's check out some of those awesome plays over uh, Season X in this week's edition of Hot Shots. Under pressure with seventy thousand dollars on the line, a hundred thousand dollars total. That is immense from Torso. So now Amphis, oh he backs it up. God. He even improves on it. Stop it, Amphis with the flip reset, double touch, ladies and gentlemen. I just joked about perhaps <laughs> OCE not being the most skillful region, but when you see stuff like that, this man is clipping on kids in a one hundred thousand dollar match. Amphis, welcome to the party. Just beautiful. I, I don't know how these guys do it. You, it's hard enough to do that in free play, let alone against the best players in OCE in the most important match they have to play. And another one! They're just running away with this. Oh, another double! Amphis over to Torsos. And I can't oh, believe he goes to the pass back. So 
there was a, an unfortunate, fortunate uh, <laughs> attack by Shad that ended up in, in a oh! goal. And what about that? How, how did Graceful? I mean, what? Get out your protractor, Chamaco. You'll be able <laughs> yeah. to make that measurement. That's about 178 degrees right there. Wow. Time after time, uh, sometimes well the crossbar just says no, but this day in this case, uh, Chad was able to get it. And whenever you're able to put it up over there, is so difficult, so hard to save. And oh my God, what a pass now! And AJG beautifully placed. Again, that was an open net. I'm, I'm talking about AJG's position of waiting for that oh. ball and being able to connect. They put AJG back in a tough spot to try to make that save happen. Shad, though, making up for it here. Ooh. What a what? shot, Shad! What? The monster! How? I, I, don't, I, I don't have any words. How he find that angle? I mean... <laughs>Rocket League is the purest form of eSport. Fight me. But before we exchange blows, let's get to the breakout, because there's some good stuff here. First up, Marchiwa wants to know what his teammate just did. Well, if you're asking, then that was probably a smurf in your game because that, my friends, was a uh, ground to air dribble, flip reset, musty flick. And that's not easy to ever do. So you got lucky having that person on your team. Next up, though, after adhesiveness, tells a better love story than Twilight. to comment on the the beautiful relationship these two have gathered over the course of that time i do question why that player stayed in the match it must have actually been true love moving on though vuxi tells us a story about helping friends rank up That's totally not me, as the sheep.
But that really is the, the circle of competitive life, isn't it? You, you create a smurf, and then soon afterwards that smurf gets too high to help out the friends you were trying to help out in the first place. It is it is difficult life being really good at Rocket League. <laughs> Our next one, though, comes from Charged Requiem and answers the question of how many plants does it take to score a goal? The answer is yes, and it's usually not on the net you were trying for. I'm not going to lie, and I hate to get you down there, Platts, but it doesn't get too much better. A little bit, but not too much better through Diamond as well. Finally, though, Daniel Jung DJ gives us a kind of calculated save. Quite sure that qualifies for that's so calculated because it was totally calculated, right? Only not real calculated ones get in that. That was that was just fate. Was the, I've saved way too many that way in all honesty. Let's move on. Up next, it's all about drip A in double tap. The Rocket League community has no shortage of trailblazers, intrepid players who go where none have gone before to innovate and open new doors for others the world over. A brilliant example of such a player is the recently retired oceanic legend Drippe, who over the course of his storied career accomplished a great many things and helped Australia get a foothold in the RLCS. But as with all stories, first we have to start at the beginning. The genesis of Drippe's competitive career was the formation of Cringe Society, a squad composed of Aussie players Torsos, Jake the Tyrant, and the man himself. The trio placed first in an ESL qualifier event, and mere days later were acquired by Alpha Sydney, a now defunct esports org who sheltered the team for their first official year of competition. Under Alpha Sydney, Trip A and Co managed to qualify for the RLCS Season 3 World Championship, the first season in which Oceania was recognized as an official region. While they didn't make it far, falling to the leftovers in the lower bracket after winning just one match prior, making it to land in your first year as a serious competitor is no small feat, and it was far from the last time that Drip A would stand tall on the world stage. Showing up in style here against the Canadians as they pull this one off. The desk predicted it correctly. The favorites are going to be the winners here as Alpha Sydney, it counts down. It hits the final second and the ball, it's just got to touch. Alpha Sydney's done what nobody thought they could <laughs> and they took it to Canada. OCE shows up immediately. Nerves out the window. They played how they needed. Incredibly fast paced, incredibly mechanically skilled. I, it was an absolute thrill to be able to cast these guys for the first time on such a big stage. Alpha Sydney would disband not after long, but the Aussie legend was quickly scooped up by Chiefs Esports Club, the team for which Drip A would spend the majority of his career. The team's unparalleled regional track record would yet again secure them a spot in the World Finals, where they would defeat future superstars NRG. One goal every five seconds, almost an RLCS impossibility. impossibility. And with 10 seconds left, another play with Drip A will confirm the biggest upset in RLCS history. They couldn't do it yesterday against G2, but today the Chiefs will do it against the former Kings of the North. NRG are out. The Chiefs winning this game number five. You mentioned it before. Every game this year is going back and forth. Season 5 was Drip A's qualification hat trick. For the third time in as many years as he was headed to the LAN, and this time defeated evil geniuses in a bit of a spooky foreshadowing. In the following season, Chief Esports Club made it the closest they'd ever been to tasting the gold, finishing an impressive fourth place at the World Championship. All of a sudden, there's life for this Chiefs team, and they're struggling to deal with it. The adapt adaptations that the Chiefs have had, again, another one drops from now four for the Chiefs. And man, the turnaround here in this series. OCE comes into this tournament and people think, you know, yes, OCE, they're still improving, but they're still playing third, fourth, 10th fiddle to North America and Europe. And they said enough of that, clap them in the face. It's four to nothing against one of the best teams in Rocket League. This would also mark the last time Drip A would make it this far with the Chiefs, however, as he would soon shatter 
shatter barriers by becoming the first player to hop regions, bidding a temporary g'day to Oceania to play for evil geniuses in North America. He would soon find that competition in NA was quite a bit stiffer than he was used to. As for the first time in his career, Drippe failed to qualify for Worlds, and in the season ranked 7th in the region. He managed to turn his fortune around soon after though, as a high profile bronze finish at DreamHack Pro Circuit Dallas that year helped cap off his North American tenure on a high note. And Bluey Classics comes through. He can't find the target. 10 seconds left. It's looking bleak. Drippe to the midfield, down to Corrupted G. The shot comes through and saved away by Alpha 54. EG are going to take down FC Barcelona. Unprecedented. There is a let's go from Classics and big smiles all around. Evil Genius is the second team from North America along with Cloud9 to advance onto the semifinals. Drippe returned to Oceania later that year, and soon after would revive the long dormant Cringe Society to compete in the historic RLCS Season X. His performance across the season was a fine end to his amazing career, and he would retire in June of 2021 after finishing second in the Oceanic Championship, cementing his legacy as one of the region's premier players. To Cringe Society's credit, they're gonna be keeping me up for a while longer. This could be a little golf man if it's just to show off a little bit. No, that, that pretty much sums up the series because Yummy, I'd say that he hits that nine times out of ten any other game yeah he's very very accurate with his doubles off the backboard but it doesn't matter cringe society taking control drip a in the lead with that one showing that he is still amongst the best in oce you know it it really is interesting too because as much as we want to always promote these other regions you know some some regions are less equal um in terms of skill than other regions and uh oceania definitely has had troubles keeping up but drippy was one of those players that felt like you know he can break that barrier and it, it showed by great placings at world championships and uh it's very sad to see him go it is very sad to see a player of this legendary status a player that has managed to keep up be off the radar now and, and done so I would have liked to see him keep going, but you gotta call it quits at some point, I suppose. So, to Drippe, good luck in the future. But that is all the time we have for today. You can check out more of our content, you know it, on YouTube and of course on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching. And for a little overtime action, here is your weekly backfire. Ba -bing.